Well, guys, it's been six months and 3,865 miles. Time for another update. And while sometimes it may appear like I'm the official spokesman for Hyundai, make no mistake about it, I am not. And to be honest with you, it's not all roses with this truck. There actually are a few things that I don't like about it and a couple of things that actually went wrong. So today, I'm gonna show you exactly what those are. Are you gonna ask me something about my truck? I am. Is it a truck? Yeah, of course it's a truck. <laughs> Paradise is found. Let's go. Guys, we could start right here. See that? It says I'm getting 13.8, now 13.9 miles to the gallon. As soon as this light changes, I'll hit the gas real slow and easy. Real slow and easy. And that number should go way up, right? If I'm just giving it a little bit of gas. Oh shit, 13.5, it went down while I was idling. According to the sticker, I should be getting somewhere around 22 miles to the gallon. My honest opinion of that gauge is that it's faulty. I don't trust it, I don't believe it, I don't think it's accurate. And the proof is in driving it now for six months. Here we go, the light changed. All right, let's keep an eye on it. Now look, I'm gonna give it really soft gas. It's going down! 12.1, 12.2, guys. I, at my foot is barely touching the gas. There's no way I should be getting 12 miles to the gallon. There's just no way. Okay, my foot is almost off the gas now. Oh, we got 13.5. Keeps this up, I'm gonna run out of gas in no time. Oh, we got 14. Listen, I'm not gonna belabor the point, and maybe it'll go up as I'm driving, 14.2 now, but all I can tell you is, that's pretty piss poor, shitty gas mileage. And all the people that were giving me crap about the Maverick, you know what? It's they're right. They're right. There's, you know, they that vehicle will get great gas mileage, and this one shouldn't be this bad. I am, I'm going to a school zone now. So I don't trust this gauge. I don't trust it. I mean, if the gas mileage is that bad, then it's pretty piss poor. The reason that I think the gauge is not accurate though is because when I was down in the Keys. I was getting almost 40. I think it might even have hit 40 a couple of times. And I was certainly getting at least in the uh, low to mid 30s on a consistent basis. Now I speed up and it goes to 17.6. So I'm not going to belabor the point. All I can say, guys, is why was I why was I able to get into the 30s, mid 30s, even around 40? And I'm not talking about driving on a highway or anything like that. I was on US 1 throughout the Keys, and I was getting steadily mid-30s. Since I got back from the Keys, I've never seen that. No matter how I was driving, no matter where I was driving, this MPG gauge is either faulty or the gas mileage in this vehicle is a lot worse than they tell you. Next up on the list is the dashboard. Listen, there's a lot of Maverick people that gave me some some crap, some hate, whatever you want to say. They gave me their opinion that this dashboard is ugly and not very user-friendly. The fact being that there's no dials on it. And I got to tell you, that assessment, I really don't agree with. One of the things that attracted me to this vehicle was the fact that it's pretty futuristic looking, you know? We're in the year 2022. To me, knobs, knobs are 1980s, all right? They're okay, listen, to each their own, and I get it. Some people, they like to see the knobs. They don't want a flat look like that. And, you know, that's just, a, that's just a difference of taste, okay? That's not what bothers me. What does bother me is the fact that it is flat like that. It's got a nice big screen, but it suffers from an abundance of dust. It may be harder to see when it's on, but trust me, uh, from where I'm sitting right now, this thing is a, just a dust magnet. And... Um, you know, who likes dust? And it definitely uh, affects the look of it when you're looking at the screen as beautiful as it is. And you know, you're seeing all the uh, all the dust on it. So 
Listen, that's not a huge thing, you know? Just bring a dust rag with you, I guess, every time you get in the car. It's it's probably pretty nitpicky, uh, but there are, there are a few things that are more than nitpicky. We're gonna get to that in a minute. Oh, look at that! 18.7 miles to the gallon. Oh, it just went down 17.8. Listen, I don't know, for all I know, maybe the car needs to warm up a little bit before the, uh, the MPGs get to what the normal uh, range should be, but you know, 13, 12, and 13, when I'm, I barely got my foot on the gas. No, nah, that, that, that does not seem right. It's also not consistent. I, I, I've seen it go up when I'm giving it gas and then go down when I'm, you know, barely giving it gas. And by the way, I have it on the smart mode, echo mode, whatever it's called. I think they call it smart, which is like the economy to try to save you gas. And, uh, I don't really notice much of a difference between that and normal, to be honest with you. You know, the other thing that makes me think that something's wrong with the MPG gauge is the fact that I've talked to other Santa Cruz owners that tell me they're consistently getting 20, 25, even high 20s, even, even around 30 consistently. So I don't know. Maybe they're all different. Who knows? Maybe each individual vehicle gets its own specific gas mileage. I don't know. By the way, we just hit 20.5. So I get it. I get it. It's going to fluctuate. For me, if it was possible for me to achieve almost 40 miles per, per gallon in the Keys, I should be able to do that anywhere because the driving I was doing down there, it's a little bit different, um, but they got their share of traffic lights and traffic too. So uh, it shouldn't be twice the gas mileage down there as it is here. Unless it has something to do with being closer to the equator or Cuba. I just gunned it and, it and it's still showing 19 miles to the gallon. 19.4 to be exact. So I don't know. You guys tell me. Does that make sense? I know this is supposed to be a what I don't like about the Santa Cruz video, but let me show you one of the things I do like. Okay, forgive me guys, I'm at the car wash and it's pretty noisy here, so I'll scream if I have to, which is nothing new for me, but truck's pretty dirty right now. There's a lot of, you know, just residual dirt that's been building up on it for the last, I don't know, week or two. One of the things I wanted to tell you guys is when you look at it, this color specifically and the paint that's on here, it almost always looks relatively clean. It almost never looks filthy. Now, I don't know if that's the, Hyundai paint or just probably what it is is just this color in particular but one great thing if you're thinking about getting this stone blue I think if you're thinking of getting this uh, one advantage to getting this color is it almost never looks dirty even when it's at its filthiest so let's clean it up Did you hear that? You heard that. I have no idea what that beep means. And then you finish the job with one of these babies. But these are the best. These will make sure your car doesn't have any spots or streaks on it. I can see myself. Who's that handsome guy? See that? See those spots there? See that? Gone. I 
That should do the trick. Okay, guys, that car wash cost me four bucks. And look at the result. Onward and upward. What is it? I love it. I told you guys, you see? People stop and ask me all the time, how you doing? And I get that question a lot. This is the all new Hyundai Santa Cruz. Is it electric? No, no. And the gas mileage ain't the best. That's my electric bike in there. I looked at it, I thought it was a new truck. Yeah, yeah, no, come check it out, check it out. I mean, you know, it's a short bed, but it's got this tonneau cover, which is pretty cool. Um, and if you didn't know that that bed was back there, you know, by looking at it, you probably wouldn't, you would, you would, you would think it was definitely an SUV, right? 100%. It's, uh, it's got almost 300 horsepower. It's, you know, it gets up pretty good, so it's a lot of fun. What do you think of the looks? I like the color. Oh, you like the color? There you go. Yeah, especially for Florida, right? Yeah. We're carrying more than the average SUV. Yeah, exactly. And by the way, the towing capacity is 5,000 pounds on this one. Yeah. Shit, that's 2,000 less than mine. Mine's only seven. You see that? I did pretty good then, huh? Yeah. There you go. What was your name? Jeffrey. Jeffrey? No, that's good. So, uh, what did you do? All right. Show me a few of the things I'm not so crazy about. See, it wasn't doing that before. Now when I open the door, it plays that little Hyundai music. Okay, I'm really, this, this is something that upsets me more than anything. My brake discs are rusting. They're, they're pretty rusted. I mean, look at that. Can you guys see that? All right. See that rust up in there? Vehicle is six months old. It's got less than 4,000 miles. And I got rust on every single disc. Look. Look at that. It's all rusted. It's all rusted in there. Listen, I'm not a mechanic. I don't, you know, work at Tire Kingdom, but I've owned enough in my lifetime. And all four wheels have rust. Okay. Here's another one. Okay. So you can see that the brake disc is rusted and all around it, it's, it's very rusty. And that does not fly with me. That is going to be taken care of. I'm going to take it to the dealer. I'm going to say, I do not want to see rust on my brakes. I'm sorry. And I'll make you guys replace them every time until they stop rusting. Listen, if that's a commonplace thing, I know we're in Florida. I know there's a lot of salt air and salt water around. I, I don't think that they should have been rusted like that. And by the way, it detracts from the look of a brand new vehicle. When you have those beautiful rims that are on the limited version that you're paying extra for, and you got to look at rust around it? Nah, 